One of the first problems you come across when you try to approach Hinduism in particular, but any of the Dharmic faiths, i.e. Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, um, as a Western atheist, one of the first barriers you encounter is the fact that in some traditions, um, the Eastern view of God is quite similar to the Western view, i.e. we're down there, he's up there, we have to make efforts to raise ourselves up to his level, we're imperfect, he's perfect, we're mortal, he's immortal, etc. Um, there's a fair amount of that in Indian thinking or in Indian philosophy, religious philosophy, theism, but there's an awful lot of other stuff. Um, and there's no actual uniformity of conception of God in Eastern thinking. Um, within Hinduism, you'll find plenty of people that believe strongly in one kind of God and discount all the other ones, but you'll meet other people that believe exactly the opposite, and then you'll meet a third person who will believe that he's an amalgam of the two uh, opposing points of view, and somebody else who will say that, no, all of that is just symbolism for the one, or uh, whatever. Um, and even the one is not necessarily just the monad, because there are theistic conceptions of non-dualism within Hinduism in particular. So what are you talking about when you talk about God in India, in the sense of India as in the backdrop for the philosophical and religious ideas that have come out of there? It's not so clear, and there are traditions in which it's deliberately made unclear, where God is simply described as he before whom all words recoil. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that is the very first hurdle that one must come across. The Western either-or way of thinking, um, I guess that comes from the, um, the split universe of heaven and hell, good and evil, um, or from the Western logical tradition of identity, um, excluded middle and non-contradiction. Um, Indians can and do use those three tools, but they've evolved unique systems of logic that don't fall apart if these are abandoned. Um, so even non-contradiction, uh, God can have contradictory uh, aspects. Now this, the Western mind simply spits out. How do you do that? Well, we kind of already do that, because if you look at the Old versus the New Testament, the, the Old Testament is kind of a wrathful titan, whereas the New Testament is this loving God. Um, <clears throat> but, say, if you take a Hindu god like Shiva or Kali, um, these are, um, in Shiva, good and evil, or if you want to say good and evil, because it's kind of hard to put it in those terms, um, where everything is merged together, um, whereas in Kali, she looks outwardly terrifying, but it's only once you get to know her in the religious sense, in the purely um, mystical sense, that she reveals herself to be all good, or all everything. So, gods can have paradoxical and contradictory nature, natures in Indian thinking. Lord Shiva is simultaneously in eternal celibate meditation and in uh, eternal dance and eternal sexual union with his female counterpart Shakti, even though he is celibate. This is possible in the Hindu view of things. Or at least it's not a contradictory one Hindu might worship a Shiva that is exclusively celibate and exclusively in meditation. Another Hindu might worship a Shiva who is uh, not celibate, um, but is eternally dancing, uh, and any number of uh, any number of stages in between and beyond that, I suppose. So there's no um, cut and dried idea as to what constitutes God. Um, there's even the, the Western 
what the equivalent of the Western pantheistic view of God in Hinduism, which seems to be one of the stronger ones, even though it's the, one of the most understated. Some Hindus believe that Krishna actually walked the earth, fought this great battle, Lord Krishna being one of the main Hindu gods. Um, there are others who will say, well, yes, I read the Gita all the time, and I uh, do puja before a murti of Krishna. In other words, I pray before a statue of Lord Krishna, but I don't really believe that Lord Krishna is there. I don't really actually believe that he actually walked the earth and did all the things that the legends say he did. Um, but that's not really the point. <laughs> um, so it, it is a contradictory thing in a tradition in which contradiction is not a negative. <laughs> contradiction does not make something impossible. Um, contradiction is possible in the Hindu view of things. It's not necessarily easy for us to see it as mortal human beings, but if you know, we discipline our minds to that, to or if we step out of the discipline that our Western thinking has put us into, maybe without us even knowing it, we might be able to wrap our head around that. <clears throat> but the Western way of thinking finds that very difficult. And the problem is, of course, Western atheists tend to rely upon a purely Western scientific, logical way of seeing the universe. Um, whereas Hinduism has all of that, or the Eastern traditions have all of that, but they have a lot more in addition to it. And it's not just faith or reason. It could be reason that goes beyond what we would call reason, i.e. things that go beyond the three classic laws of logic. Um, so that's the first problem. What does an Indian today, or an ancient Indian, or an ancient Chinese, or an ancient Thai mean when he or she says God? It's by no means as clear. It may be clear to individuals, but it's not clear overall in the big picture the way that it is in the West. That's just the first problem. Um, you believe in God or you don't, i.e. you're an atheist or a theist? No. Um, again, there's some of that in India, but there's a lot more beyond that. <laughs>